Hello, Internet. We are live. We are live. All right. So a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. And uh, thank you for joining us here at uh, Code It Live. I am Sam Basu. I'm a dev advocate at Progress Software. With me, I have my very good friend, not the side, Erika McShane. How are you, Erika? I'm good, Sam. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. All right. So it's Friday. So we uh, have done a lot of like coding streams through the week, but it's Friday. So we get to stretch our legs a little bit and relax and um, have conversations that we have been missing out since it's 2020. And we can't hang out as much in person. And uh, the people that we work with, people who are passionate uh, within our company and out in the community, we miss having conversations. So this is the chat show where we um, talk to people that we know are passionate and awesome. So on that note, let's please welcome uh, Erika Maxchin officially. So <laughs> tell us uh, who you are, Erika. I've known you for years, but uh, yeah, introduce yourself, please. Sure, Sam. Um, so Erica McShane, I'm our Senior Director of Corporate Communications here at Progress. Um, basically, what that means is I do all of our media work, um, analysts like Gartner Forster, uh, corporate social media, internal communications, basically any uh, mechanism for communication that's not, say, our customers and partners, I'm part of that effort. So. I do not envy your job <laughs> at all. That sounds like a lot because it's it's internal and external facing and it's everything that you do. So kudos. Mm -hmm. and, and we are sure glad to have you uh, heading up the ship here. Uh, so uh, and, and where are you? Where, where do you live? Um, I live just outside the Boston area. So Okay. So yep. close to our HQ. Mm -hmm. And um, do you like Boston? Do you, do you hate anything? Born and raised here, so uh, I definitely not a winter person, but I'll, <laughs> I'll never leave. It's just one of those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you get used to a little bit of snow, but it's Boston. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love the uh, I love the geography. I love the food scene. Uh, I love the people. What's not to like? Yeah. All right. So, and, and how long have you um, been here with Progress? So I just in August passed my eighth year combined. I came through the acquisition of Telerik. So I joke, you know, at Telerik, I was kind of old hat, been around forever. And then when we came into progress. I was like a newbie because you have people that have been with the company for 20, 25, 30 years. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I'm in the same boat. Like uh, I used to work with Erica before the acquisition. And uh, now we are just a much bigger public company with a lot more worries on your shoulders, as I can imagine. <laughs> but uh, it's it's good. So uh, how, how do you like your job? Like any anything you really particularly enjoy doing or challenges? Um, yes, on both fronts, a lot of <laughs> I, I love my job. I've you know, I've been doing technology PR for, I hate to admit it, but upwards of 20 years. Eesh, sounds awful. <laughs> but um, I, I do love what I do. I, I think what I like about it is that I can help craft the story for the company and get the right messages out. You know, the challenge often is, you know, there's so much good stuff that I want to get out and I want people to understand. But, you know, it, it's hard because you, you have to be careful in what you share and how you share it. And everybody has a perspective and, a, and you know, an opinion. So, so, you know, we may say something in one way and it's taken in the wrong way and then you have to go back and adjust. So it's a it's a constant iterative cycle, but it's never dull, which is mm -hmm. what I, I bet. I, yeah. I bet. So. yeah. And it, it's it's funny, like we, we sometimes don't think about like it's a software company or a tech company isn't just about churning out code. Like we are all parts of like we are cogs in a big gear and everything needs to churn together. And we have to get our story straight. Uh, otherwise, we are not doing justice to all the engineering efforts and all the project management efforts and everything that's uh, that we are putting out uh, for our customers. So that's got to be a challenge because it's like ever changing, right? Technology landscapes. Mm -hmm. And and for sure. And you know, I always think of like um, Kevin Costner and Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Honestly, they won't. You can build the mm -hmm. most amazing technology in the world if we're not getting our voice out there. Then no one's going to see it and use it. And, you know, that's where me and my team come into play and in helping to get that word out. So, and that's, I mean, that's a lot of what you do from a developer relations standpoint. Um, I would not for the life of me be 
ever try to pass myself self off as someone technical. Um, so you being able to have those conversations with the folks that are using the stuff day to day is just as critical as me trying to get the message out to, you know, the investor community or, you know, some of the larger businesses and in, in media. So. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all uh, have to do our share. Right. So can you describe what you do to a 40 year old? <laughs> um, it's really hard. I will say, I mean, my mother to this day still has a hard time trying to understand what it is I do. <laughs> uh, you know, people say, oh, what is Erica doing these days? And she's like, communications. And that's about the extent <laughs> of what she can describe. Um, uh, the, the way I would describe it, I think, to a four-year-old is, you know, if you if you look at a magazine and on one side you have an advertisement and on one side you have an article from a reporter, my job is that article from the reporter, getting that reporter interested in mm -hmm. our company, our business, what we're doing and getting them to write about it. Um, because I personally believe, and I think a lot of people do, that that reporter ar article has a lot more credibility because it's not paid for, it's not marketing messaging, right. it, it's written by somebody else. So um, that's essentially, there's a lot more to what communications is, but that's probably the easiest way I can explain to people. Um, and they kind of understand, it's like, all right, I know what you're talking about now, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and you've been doing this for years, but like, how did you, get started like what, what's your career been like what's your education been like so uh, I went to business school I went to Bentley uh, University mm -hmm. in in the Boston area and I do uh, my degree is in business communications I'm one of those weird nice. people that actually did what I went to school for <laughs> um, and yeah. you know I, I I found PR because I actually started as a as a customer service rep at a food ingredient company not really what I wanted to do. It wasn't that exciting. And I started researching public relations agencies and I loved the thought of it and went and started my career there. Worked at one agency for a couple of years before the dot-com bubble burst and got laid off. <laughs> and then I ended up at another agency for a solid 10 years and got to work on a variety of technologies and businesses and companies. It was really, I loved doing it fast paced. Um, and then I decided you know, it was so fast paced as agency life is that, you know, when I started having a family, I said, you know what, I need to slow down a bit. Uh, I found Telerik, nice, quiet, privately held small company, thought I was, you know, slowing things down and yeah. far <laughs> from it. <laughs> a year and a half later, right. we're acquired. And <laughs> so just as busy, but a very different busy and still learning a ton. Yeah, yeah. Now, like in, in the marketing and communications world, like um, what are some things that like really excite you in, in what you do every day? Um, so I think what excites me, part of it is the expect the unexpected, right? So mm -hmm. if you told me last year that COVID was going to happen, I would have laughed in your face. I was like, there's no <laughs> way business is coming to a halt. Schools are, work, are remote. No yeah. way. Um it's been such a learning experience and it COVID actually really thrust internal communications front and center in a lot of businesses because yeah. yeah, all of a sudden people had to care about how their employees were doing, you know, how they're coping and everything like that. So just having that opportunity to do something that I never would have imagined doing, um, that definitely gets me going. And the positive response you receive when you do something that people are super excited about, even like the little wins. So, you know, we have been really focused on corporate social responsibility and we did um, a couple of campaigns around the LGBTQ plus community around pride month. And I had an employee um, reach out to me just a week or two ago because he was doing a blog post in Bulgaria and I said oh did you happen to see these he's like oh my gosh I've read everything you guys have put out you have no idea how much the support means to me personally and it just it it's you just feel so good that something so small as a blog post is impacting somebody and and making them happy for a minute so yeah yeah that, that's well said and maybe in a way COVID is making us care about humans something we should always be doing anyways uh, just caring about our mental health and, and of course, like physical health and like taking care of ourselves and, and our employees. That's so important. So, yeah, internal communications are uh, super um, important and uh, kind of uh, keeps you grounded um, in, in with everything that's going on. But what about like external facing? Like, 
let me put, maybe put you in a spot like uh, PR uh, can be fun, right? So like without maybe going into details, like maybe tell us um, like uh, any, uh, like be it from us or be it out in the industry, like any like PR disasters you have seen and oh. how to recover <laughs> from them. Yeah, there, there's a lot of those. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many ways that these things can go right and wrong. And uh, what's most important when engaging with the media and spokespeople and everything else is, is knowing your audience, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I say, you know, it, looking at the developer community and a lot of the folks that you work with, I would never try to play myself off at all because you'd see right through me in a minute. You know, I'm always the first to say, hey, I'm not a technologist. So if I'm talking completely insane, by all means, let me know. Um, because I, I can talk just enough to be dangerous, but I couldn't tell you what a line of code says. Um, and so working with reporters, you have to have that level of authenticity and engagement, and you have to have, to have a good story to go to them with. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges a lot of businesses have is we, we eat our own dog food, right? So mm -hmm. we've, we've made this new, we have this new product um, version coming out. We're super excited stuff customers have been asking for, you know, can't wait. But I kind of come in from that third party uh, perspective and say, okay, how is this different than what our competitors are doing? Do, is this already out in the industry? Is it the first best only? Because reporters are getting hundreds of pitches a day um, from various PR people. And if we can't have that differentiation, we're not going anywhere. So it's, it's trying to find those little nuggets that's going to get the interest of someone that doesn't know who progress is or doesn't know what our, our technology does, doesn't know like all of the work that we're doing with Microsoft Blazor, for example, um, and showing why we are the best and why they should be talking to us. So it's, it's definitely a challenge. And, you know, uh, one funny thing is working internationally that I think of early on in my PR days, um, I had to pitch a publication in Germany. I don't speak German, but I thought I was trying to do the right thing. And I tried to do like a Google translate of my pitch into German. And the reporter came back with the nastiest email that you could ever imagine saying, we all know how to speak English. English. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> I was so apologetic. I'm like, I was just trying to, you know, doing the right thing here. But, you know, lesson learned. Um, but, you know, having those bumps and bruises along the way, I think, is how we become better professionals. So. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, stuff well that said. sticks in our minds. <laughs> yeah, and uh, when we're out on social media, you see some of the like the PR messes that people deal with. Like that's mm -hmm. not a boat you uh, you want to be on. It's just really hard yeah. sometimes. Like yeah. when you get bad press, it's really hard to recover. Yeah, but, I hate when anyone says, "Oh, isn't um, any all press good press?" I'm like, "No, mm, no, it's not. No, no. I yeah. I don't like negative. I don't like crisis communications." Rather just keep it even. <laughs> All right, absolutely. Now let, let's let's go back to like uh, COVID for uh, one more time. Uh, and sure. We don't have to go back. We are living through this thing, which hopefully we are turning a corner. But like, what are some um, external uh, facing challenges that this pandemic has brought on you and your team? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, I mean, I'll, first and foremost, uh, the challenge is a lot of the reporters. That's all they're writing about. And they're they're leaving their traditional beats and focusing on all things COVID. It's starting to settle back a little bit now um, because I think, frankly, a lot of people are sick of hearing about COVID. But, yeah. you know, early on, if you didn't have a technology to address some aspect of it, they, they didn't want to hear from you. Or if you weren't willing to talk about what you were doing within your own business, it's you weren't going to get any traction there whatsoever. Um, I think, you know, a lot of uh, marketing and communications was also just challenged in general with, you know, our, our our customers and our partners were all just, everyone was just trying to make it through the day, uh, mm -hmm. let alone think proactively, think bigger picture, longer term. It's like, so I think it stalled a few things for a period of time. Right. I think things are starting to catch back up. I think people are realizing, unfortunately, this is the new normal. We don't know how long it's going to go. It's going a lot longer than people initially thought. Mm -hmm. um, so we're adapting, you know, that's what we yeah, do as yeah. a human race. We adapt. <laughs> so Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it's been a tricky uh, slope because like you, you want to have empathy for everything that's going on, but that's not the only thing you can keep talking about. And on the flip side, like when I see tech companies trying to cash in on the things that COVID has op opened up for them, that's that's a yeah, bit of a tricky thing to do. Yeah. And that that's, 
I, I feel very much the same way. I, I'm not a big fan of capitalizing on human tragedy, frankly. And you're right, you see, a, and that's where from a PR perspective, you have to be very careful and walk that fine line. And you have to have those tough conversations to say, hey, listen, we're selling a product here. I don't know that we want to be going full fledged campaign around COVID. That's not the right message. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have very smart people here at Progress that are all very well meaning and have good hearts. And, you know, no one really approached us and said, hey, let's capitalize on this. But I have seen that in my career where companies have done that and it's been horrendously, it's yeah. horrendous. I've, I've had, I've watched colleagues lose their jobs over over the media just ripping them apart by you know mm -hmm. trying to capitalize on something terrible yeah 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 and like for all of us like living through this land and you you have kids right you have two three three okay so <laughs> like uh, and then you've been a remote worker for a long time uh have you or i mean you you're kind of part uh, in the office uh, as well yeah i, I fl typically flip back and forth i've been home since march yeah. like the rest of us but yeah yeah, so, uh, I mean, all of us are uh, kind of adapting, like you said, I mean, and I, I have been remote for like almost 10 years now, but this is different. This is so different having kids at home and everything going on. Um, so how are things on your end? I mean, um, crazy just insane. dealing with everything, <laughs> crazy and insane, yeah. Yeah, and, um, it, it, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's hard. I was talking to like so many other people, um, like um, for, uh, for moms uh, who are working entirely from home, like, we like to think like modern dads are um, capable enough to do everything, but like there are some things just like where nothing but a mom will do for a kid. Right? It's it's hard for, for uh, yeah. So kudos to all that you do and just keeping your work and life balance going amongst these crazy times. Yeah. Well, thank you. I don't, I don't know if you can hear right now. I, I specifically for this, I said to my kids, I have three that are still remote learning. Um, and I said, listen, at 10 o'clock, I'm getting on a broadcast. I'm going to lock my door. I don't want anyone coming near me. Make sure the dogs stay away. And they're like, okay, mom. Because otherwise, where I typically sit, it's in the middle of the cast. You would have seen kids running back and forth, dogs like jumping on my lap. And <laughs> so it's, it's uh, chaos. It's, it's yeah, it's the new reality, and and uh, like we, we don't even apologize because like we're, it's hard for the kids. Like, where are they going to go? And it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and the yeah. thing, the, the one thing I, I I always try to be as positive as possible on these things. And the one thing I've I've said to a lot of folks is this is the I would have never had the opportunity to be like a stay at home mom. Um, I've always been kind of the breadwinner of the family and everything, so there was no opportunity there at least over the last year, I've been much more entrenched in what my kids are doing from an educational standpoint. I have a much more engagement with the teachers. I'm seeing right. what they're doing on a day. So I'm trying to take in as much appreciation for it as I can. There are days that I, yeah, I'm ready to rip my own hair out, <laughs> but you know, I was like, I'm never going to have this opportunity again. So I'm just right. Tr right. trying to, you know, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. No, well said. Uh, trying to take the positive out of this. Yeah. All right. Let's talk more about you. Like um, you have been in the tech industry for such a long time. Like what do you see out there right now uh, that you find exciting from a technology perspective? I mean, there, there are just so many things and so many layers that un until you're in the tech sector, you don't realize how many layers there are. And, um, you know, it's funny. I, I try to have conversations with friends about, you know, work and career. And most of my friends have just don't get it whatsoever. A lot of teacher friends, you know, a lot of folks that are nowhere near um, what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. And just, I think the speed at which things evolve and how far along from a technology perspective we are, um, I think being in the trenches of it, you almost don't appreciate it as much. And I say this because, you know, um, I even look at when COVID started, not to go back to that again, but with Zoom, so many of my friends are so excited by Zoom. They're like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. And I'm like, I'm so sick of video conference calls. What are you kidding me? And and like, they just don't understand. This is something that's been around for quite a long time now. If I went to one of my friends and said, oh, you know, I, I did a, a Twitch stream today, they'd be like, what, what's Twitch? You know? <laughs> so I, I, there's just so many cool things. I don't really, I know it's not really an answer to your question. I don't know where to go with it. Um, but it's, it's just something as a, a non-technologist, I have a great appreciation for. No, yeah, that, that is well put because like sometimes like when we are, like you said, in the trenches, we don't realize the things that we are churning out um, and it's it's moving the 
um, envelope forward. But it's mm -hmm. it's a challenge, like for any tech company, like just a constantly changing landscape and things um, just evolving. Uh, if if it doesn't work, if it doesn't stick, then you just have to move on. You cannot be like emotionally tied to things that are that you maybe have built. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, what would you say is um, like we all have tech gadgets, we have computers and uh, tablets and things. Like, what's something you really treasure in your everyday life? You know what? I'm old school. My my biggest thing for me is my cell phone. I live and die by it. It's my calendar. If I don't have something in my calendar, my phone, it doesn't exist. If I need to leave the house during work hours, I have my email. I have my Teams. Mm -hmm. It's just that all in one that if i did if i don't have it i'm lost so i'm a little bit old school that way <laughs> no no it's it's important it's it's where everything is like you said i remember um uh, back in uh, i used to have a palm pilot like the first uh, smartphone that was out like early 2000s and then i distinctly remember steve jobs um uh, kind of announcing the first iphone where he he was talking about like three four different devices and then he said oh one more thing and this is what puts it all together and mm. that's uh it, it's funny like we we take smartphones for granted but it's not been that long i mean it's been like 13 14 oh. years that we have we have had them uh, like the way we, we have yeah and yeah no 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 yeah not to, not to date myself but i remember um when i was early on in my career it wasn't common to have even like a cell phone in the office um and i think my company had given out to the management team um what was it the trio or something like that mm -hmm. you no know, very yeah a very I early remember. version yeah and i remember a friend of mine saying oh i'm getting a smartphone i'm like what do you need that for i don't need that and now mm. i'm like oh my gosh you know <laughs> so it yeah. wasn't that long you're right it's not long at all and yeah. it seems like it but yeah yeah I, I remember carrying like pagers i used to work for a healthcare mm -hmm. thing where you're on call and uh, you know, those things were just horrendous like yeah uh, have, having the pager trying to find a phone to call somebody back oh yeah <laughs> right, <I've>, exactly <laughs> yeah all right. Well, um, obviously, this year is different for all of us. But in general, like, what's your normal work-life balance? Like, how do you deal with things? Um, so it's it's interesting. You know, I was I'm a very career-driven person. However, my kids have have grounded me like no other. And I'll I'll say to people, and I say that I've said it to my boss, and I say, no offense, but my job is a means to an end. It's for my family. It's to be able to give my family what they want and need. So, you know, I, I, I'm very mindful of that. And, you know, I, I make sure you have to kind of build your own work-life balance. You know, no one's going to hand it to you or you got to figure out your, like what you can and can't do. And I'm not even going to say priorities because sometimes work is a priority and you know what, yeah. I've got to work late and I've got to work through dinner and, you know, my kids are, are great about it. Um, but then I also say there are times where it's like, yeah, there's, a, there's, work still to be done, but it's not urgent. It does, it can be done tomorrow. I need to put it away and be able to sit down and have dinner with my kids. Um, so it's, it's really trying to strike that balance. Um, prior to, prior to COVID, my routine, which I miss tremendously is, you know, I'd be at the office, I'd leave the office, I'd go to the gym for an hour. That would be like my kind of mental break between the work day and the home day and kind of re-gear myself up to then go home and do the family thing, the homework and the cleaning mm -hmm. the house and laundry and all that stuff. Um, now it's just so intertwined. Um, I, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I feel like at times I'm living Groundhog Day because <laughs> it's the exact same thing every day. Um, you know, so we're adapting and, you know, would I love to be able to go back to the gym? Yeah. With my going to, I, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm my, I live in a two family. My mom lives downstairs and has health conditions. So I have to be mm -hmm. ultra careful um, of where I go and what I do. So at, at some point I'll figure it out, but you know, for now, live yeah, in the dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so many of us have had to like adopt to like, you know, where do you work out? Like, and, and uh, you cannot just be sitting on a chair all through the day and wow. just, uh, at least we had the summer and fall months to just walk around out outdoors, but uh, mm -hmm. winter is going to be hard to find the time and the space to uh, do what a gym used to do for us. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, under normal circumstances, like well, what fun stuff do you do outside of work? Um, so, Fun stuff. So uh, I will say I'm a bit of a foodie. Uh, my best friend and I, we like to go out to like a nice dinner. Um, so we'll treat ourselves that way. Uh, the other thing is, you know, 
being at home with the kids, it's hard to kind of get out and do a lot of things, especially when they were younger. So I, I'm a bit of a DIY hobbyist. I've done a bunch of stuff in my house and I, I actually got into the hobby of reupholstering furniture. So wow. uh, yeah, so you know, at night I'll sit and sew or like with my staple gun and just like mess around with, um, you know, old types of furniture, bring it back to new life. And, you know, just, I like, wow. have, I like having a tangible end result. Instead of sitting at a computer all day, I get to use my hands for a little while. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, people who are foodies are, are good at heart. I, I love that. <laughs> you, you have to enjoy food. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's mm-hmm. like I, I eat to survive. It's not the other way around or, uh, yeah. So, uh, and, and that's great. I mean, and, and do it yourself like, oh, okay. So, um, talking about things that we have found the time to do <laughs> amongst uh, these these COVID times, uh, we are actually just getting into a new house, and so this whole uh, home ownership and do it yourself is new to us. And I'm just scratching the surface. It's it's amazing what you can do if you put your uh, heart and mind to it. So, Pinterest yeah. and YouTube are wonderful for figuring stuff out. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've, I've done a lot of stuff in my house. I don't do electrical. I don't pl- do plumbing. There's certain yeah. stuff I won't do, but you can experiment with different things. And, you know, it may not be perfect, but it's certainly a heck of a lot cheaper and you learn mm-hmm. something. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of food, um, what do you like to eat? What's your favorite cuisine? <sighs> Everything. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. I, I, I joke. I have a five foot nothing Italian woman for a mother, so I have to cook. It's just dead, uh, there'd be something wrong with me if I didn't. So I do like to cook. Um, don't get to do it often enough. Um, it's funny. I was trying to think about like stuff like my favorite food, and there isn't one thing. You know, my uh, my kid's dad often joked with me. He's like, I've never seen anyone enjoy a meal. He's like, you could be eating fast food, or you could be at like this high end restaurant. You just enjoy. You can tell you enjoy the experience. Um, you know, I will say I, I love desserts like cake and cupcakes are my, my downfall for sure. And, but you know, I'm willing to try anything once. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm in the same boat. Like you, you got to enjoy food. It's, it's what uh, keeps you going mm-hmm. and you have to enjoy the little things as well. And of course, when you do fine dining, uh, I, we, we started out the, um, the pandemic, like cooking a lot at home and then we are still going, but it's starting to take a toll. Uh, it's just not stuff every day. And I was uh, looking at uh, social media and like everybody is experiencing the same thing. It's like nonstop dishes. Like how can a family mm-hmm. have so many dishes and so much trash? And it's just a dishes reality. and laundry. Oh, it's <laughs> constant. <laughs> yeah. All right. So speaking of maybe fun uh, things uh, to look forward to, or maybe, uh, maybe a trick question. If you had a uh, million dollars right now, what would you do? Um, well, I, first and foremost, I'd probably pay off my bills. <laughs> um, and I would make sure that my kids were set up for, for college. That's first and foremost. I think, you know, but for myself, you know, if and when I can travel, I would love to travel to Europe and, mm-hmm. and spend some time doing that. Um, and then what I would love to do someday is uh, to get like a summer house, like down the Cape or something near the beach where I could just escape for a weekend, you know, unplug from everything and just enjoy that. So that's probably what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. No, well said. And and we love, we love traveling as well and, and travel. I feel like if that's one thing you never waste your money on um, because it's, it's opening up your mind. It's, it's your perspective. You're, you're seeing new things and different cultures and Yeah. Yeah, and and how old are your uh, kids? Just so if I yeah, um, may ask. 13, 11, and nine. Oh so. wow! Okay, so yes. they definitely keep you busy. Yeah, mm-hmm, sure. I think like like post like maybe eight or so, they at least uh, like you you have a different set of problems than just very hands on taking care of them. Like ours is just five, and we are waiting mm-hmm. for him to kind of be a little bit more uh, human and, and <laughs> uh, do all of the things. But yeah, I can imagine like thirteen like teenagers have a whole set of other challenges that you're gonna get into. <laughs> for sure, a whole lot of attitude, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. I bet. All right. Well, Erica, we uh, we appreciate everything that you and your team does. We, we love you. Uh, I've known you for years and years, and you're amazing. So please keep on doing what you're doing. Um, any uh, any parting thoughts? Like, what are you looking forward to in life for the next like few years to come? Um, well, thank you first of all, Sam. I've enjoyed working with you as well. And you know, I couldn't do my job without folks like you as, as spokespeople. And you know being able to tell a good story. So thank you for that. Um, 
uh, next few years, it's hard to tell, you know, what's going to happen. You know, I'm just trying to trying to make sure that my kids have everything they need. And that's that's my my biggest focus. Make sure I enjoy what I'm doing. I've often said, you know, the day I stop enjoying what I'm doing, then it's time for change. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Like I said, I love what we're doing. I love it keeps me on my feet, keeps me going. So, um, you know, hopefully just continuing that path of just enjoying what I do and who I am and the people I'm, I'm surrounded by. So I'm pretty yeah, basic no. that way. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and it, it is so true. Like no matter what industry you are in, and especially in the tech industry, we, we don't talk about the, the human side and then the people that we work with enough. And I think we need to celebrate that more. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, it is just to slow down and appreciate life and then the people that you work with. Uh, and uh, I will, uh, give you a shout out, like we appreciate like the story that you said, uh, like our inclusion and diversity efforts, our CSR, we appreciate all of that because that that's important. It, it what makes us proud to be able to work with people who care. For sure, and I agree 100%, so. Yeah. All right, so it's about uh, about time. It's just a quick chat here, but uh, I'm so glad that we were able to do this because we can't hang out in person. Uh, these are the times where we all uh, sit down with a cup of coffee and have a chat. Sometimes it's uh, it's good to just take the time out explicitly to do that because we are we are missing out. So uh, I appreciate you, Erica, for hopping on and doing this. Well, thanks, Sam. Again, I, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad you reached out. You know, it it was much better than, you know, sitting and, you know, trying to come up with a messaging document or something along those lines this morning. So <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll go back to that right away after this. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, thank you. And folks in the chat room, folks watching on Twitch, uh, we appreciate your time as well. Uh, I think that's going to be it for uh, the stream uh, or the channel this week. But Come back next week. We'll have our regular scheduled shows uh, across .NET and JavaScript and all the technologies that we deal with. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you. So until then, Erica, thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.